the finance ministry has recently said that uh, at least to the other ministries that don't come with new policies or new schemes to us we are not going to fund it they have also said that whatever we have given recently we might take it back nobel laureate abhijit banerji commenting on this he said that this will slow down growth even more do you agree with him i think this is again a jugglery with numbers so i don't have any problem if the government uh, uh, government announces thousands of policies and at the end of the day doing nothing so that is a different thing so what uh, as a student of economics what we understand to so in order to revive the economy you have to do certain basic things if those things are done then then it doesn't matter whether you are announcing 100 policies or taking back 50 policies the basic thing that needs to be taken care of right now is like first addressing the uh, demand deficit that the economy is currently facing so in that case what we need is a huge amount of fiscal stimulus which is missing so i i think that is the need of the r and in order to do that uh, there are uh, there are different views regarding that people are saying that uh, that might lead to inflation but i think that is not a matter of concern because this is a demand deficit situation so it should not uh, worry us uh, much that uh, there will be inflation so need of the r is immediately uh, immediately uh, uh, raising the aggregate demand that is the need of the r and in any way that the government does by uh, announcing a single policy or by announcing thousand policies it doesn't matter that is the need of the as overall do you think if we stop making schemes or welfare policies will it slow down growth uh, siddharth um yes uh, surely and which is where the bad fiscal math comes in so um if your output doesn't rise if it falls your uh, uh, fiscal deficit no matter how small it is as a part of gdp uh, is large so yes i think um not giving appropriate fiscal uh, therapy to the economy at this point could lead to um a prolonged slowdown and we know that uh, that that the slowdown had started before uh, before coronavirus hit our manufacturing sector had entered um, textbook recession um in the october december quarter of 2019 so um we were uh, we were already in need of some in, uh, some sort of um, help from the government and this this crisis has just made it all the more pronounced so yes i do think we need a uh, proper therapy in order to come out of this crisis irrespective of the defi- i mean fiscal deficit as a the discipline fiscal deficit and all of that it comes when the economy it, it's a textbook macroeconomics tells us that if the economy is working at the at a full employment level we can think about that but already as siddharth is pointing out we were going into a recessionary trend and now now this is the most common one about that the jobs there is no map of aggregate demand being pointed out and at this point of time when you think about like we are going to scrap schemes firstly that's undemocratic in a way that first of all again what milanam is saying that you announce some 50 poll schemes and implement one that's one part of it and secondly even if when you are announcing it it sounds like we can scrap it back as if this this is something a employer employee relation that this government is going to do with the economy and that's not quite the way to manage the economy in the recession at this point of time and definitely i agree to mukund and say that uh, completely that fiscal deficit should not be the concern when the gdp and uh, employment is in the uh, is it's in a downward trend uh, because however small fiscal deficit if gdp is not growing it is going to be there uh, even if you control to discipline or control it two crore salaried individuals have lost their jobs recently and this is from cmi's data what is the right way to protect the middle class they are also a big section of the voter base of any government or any party what is the right way to protect the middle class and the youth of india so the thing is that as you said that uh, there has been a huge amount of job losses and that is a really uh, matter of concern for all of us uh, now immediately so we can uh, uh, categorize in, uh, it into short term and uh, short run and long run immediately the people who are jobless again the basic thing you need to provide cash in hand to them immediately to give them some relief now uh, after that i think it might sound a bit unconventional but the only people who are untouched in this uh, pandemic are the government employees okay so i think the burden should be shared between all of us okay by saying that i i mean if there is some sort of wage cut or something like that and that amount is relocated for the welfare of the, those people who have lost jobs i think uh, that makes some sense because end of the give it to someone else 
the government should make sure that no one salary is cut for that matter is there a way to do that i think uh, the only way to do that uh, do that is by again uh, uh, and uh, like implementing huge fiscal uh, stimulus which the government hasn't been doing so i think an alternative to this uh, assuming that the government will not again go for fiscal uh, stimulus rather they will announce this and that this uh, one thing can be done uh, and uh, this is for the immediate relief and uh, i think for the medium or, or long run once the situation uh, uh, situation uh, gets better i think what we have seen from this covid experience take for example kerala they are reaping the benefits of uh, spending in public health so i think uh, the the first thing that the government can do uh, spending huge amount of money for public health and this will be uh, beneficial for two reason one is that uh, it will uh, it will help uh, creating a better health infrastructure also it will provide money to the people uh, directly in their hand and there will be a lo lot of employment generation which is the need of the earth. so that is a, that is a few things that the government can look at i was reading up on this and uh, when it came to i found a solution in which that had been specifically referred to the tourism sector which is establishing funds for the tourism sector so that uh, people can take money from that fund and pay for jobs because we know that a lot of people in the rural economy especially in states like rajasthan are employed specifically in uh, uh, tourism which is for probably an informal but a lot of it is a proper source of income for these people so i think establishing these kind of funds for a lot more industries can go a long way in ensuring that the wages are provided but moreover the problem right now is that the kind of uh, way that the government has taken to address unemployment is uh, indirect i mean they think that people will take credit people will expand and due to the expansion employment will come back but that's a it's a huge chain and huge assumptions attached to every step in the way you need to protect the existing jobs that are there rather than thinking about creating more jobs and you have to save jobs right now then to think that the people who will be laid off can be reemployed so i think establishing these kinds of funds and enabling companies i mean enabling companies with money and benefits to so, so as to retain these employees right now i in the form of probably some incentives in taxes or something like that people who right now currently protect employers is more way to go forward than to think backwards after employment and then generation employment again number of jobs decline it's informal or formal i mean there are in rural india absolute number of women working have declined the absolute number means informal informal both included and that has declined so there is no denial about job losses that has happened and i mean the amount of job security that comes with the job may be formal or informal and that can be discussed and debated upon but there has been job loss and let's i mean there is no hiding behind who says around me but i i rather i i would rather extend what brinda was telling that uh, like it's it's a high time that we think about what we were seeing that the sick public sector industries we have been i mean in in our all indian economy things that we had already discussed about sick public sector industries and the like uh, disinvesting from those public sector industries and uh, all of that during a rather 80s till 2000 there has been so and more recently there has been little more so there are places there are countries which are renationalizing many of its social sectors there are instances uh, right the post covid there are uh, sectors which are renationalized and up like again as a response to the crisis and those renationalized re sectors can provide em employment as well gainful economic activity can provide employment it can provide stimulus to the gdp it can directly provide social security to those worker as well as the ones dependent on them and again that's a path that has been taken but not even one uh, single time been spoken and okay. kerala as siddharth was bring out there has been examples in kerala there are several private industries which have stopped and then pub, there has been public uh, overtaken uh, by the uh, government and then they re restarted uh, the whole process of production and i think that's the way to right now go to boost employment gainful economic activity should start with the government and they can uh, this is the time to learn the lesson because as we know that uh, as we go further there is artificial intelligence coming in so there will be automation of jobs and there is a threat of climate change looming large upon us so we need to be prepared for all these threats which are coming in future so that way what we can do is we can fix, first of all fix the manrega scheme and also expand it to urban areas so that we are prepared for future situations like this we can't just rely on 
credit schemes and all for creating job because there is no demand and unless there is demand no one will invest or take any credit uh, if i have to ask all of you two sectors that you think the government should start investing in post covid after we come out of this uh, health crisis and we rebuild our economy two sectors that the government should definitely invest in i start with brinda uh, i think infrastructure projects because they employ a lot of uh, um, uh uh migrants and they employ a lot of unskilled laborers within the construction domain i think expanding on construction because we've already talked about how infrastructure is the need of the earth not even just in the present but in the future so i think infrastructure and construction is something that can boost and has a lot of backward and forward linkages within the economy so i think it's very important to put your money into that and i also think that tourism is also an important sector especially india has a huge tourism uh, potential within the economy also so i think securing it making it much more better and you know uh, bringing investment in that sector can also go a long way in making india more competitive like uh, somebody said that you know you want to focus on the kind of fdi you want and not compete blindly with other countries so i think this is the kind of fdi india can have a good advantage in and something that it should also focus on i for one think that the government should in fact stop uh, investing as much in education and healthcare should stop investing i'm taking your question the other way around should stop investing as much in education and healthcare and instead try providing uh, vouchers or some sort of cash transfer cash handouts to to the poor and the needy so that they may access private education and healthcare because in a long history of failing to deliver deliver appropriate education uh, deliver appropriate healthcare that would enable workers to transition from from informal uh, sector jobs to formal sector jobs so to cite a statistic back in the 1970s agriculture composed around 75% of our output and uh, we and and 75% roughly of our labor force worked in agriculture but uh, as of recently agriculture contributes less than 15% to gdp but continues to employ 50% uh, of our labor force so what we have failed at doing is enabling our informal sector workers to uh, to make this transition to the secondary and then on to the tertiary sector so, and 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 that uh, reflects the failure of education of healthcare where i think the government should in fact uh, perform lesser of a role should hand out vouchers uh, conditional vouchers to these uh, families and allow them to access these things so this could be a long term solution to the job creation and the unemployment problem because even the even the jobs that we have added to the to the manufacturing and uh, tertiary sector are the low level jobs that workers from agriculture have come to they haven't been able to climb up so uh, there i think the government should in fact try to uh, reap its education uh, its role in uh, india's education and healthcare so that uh, investing in public goods like education healthcare also has a very high multiplier effect right uh, it helps people uh, do you think not investing in education or like stopping uh, investment in education and healthcare would be such a good idea because uh, i get so here you in there that is a social value to it um correct so uh, so the problem is um, as we have seen uh, many reports document that this investment is not there teachers don't show up the curriculum is not up to date and um, and uh, uh, and children are just enrolled but they don't attend uh, these public schools regularly so we see many reports document the failures of government there what it could do is redirect the funds it could it could give these funds directly to families and allow them to access private uh, education and healthcare so it would be in the expenditure be at par or good enough how do you ensure that i am so going to um uh, out. once you are uh, you are giving incentive for people to join the private sector like educate private education sector but how does the government govern how the teachers there teach or how the entire setup is private sector we know that competition competition would ensure a uh, uh, quality delivery of services so um uh, parents of children would always have the option of withdrawing their kids from school where where teaching is not up to the mark and to sort of send them to a different school so we see this happening all the time um, in in all sorts of products and services so i don't think um, that should be a problem there's no point in uh, declining the fund right now and uh, the private entries that we are talking about in rural india for uh, first generation learners if you think that 
cash vouchers would enable parents to send their kids to the to to the children to the school that that itself it doesn't work at all um, in case and the population of rural india is much larger and i think but what siddharth as a, as a point has is that um, uh, that why whether or why we are thinking about redirecting steering and more and more like we can have both yeah, yeah and uh, and definitely i mean why we have to take away fund from a social sector of health and education and then think about giving stimulus to other sectors uh, but the government doesn't spend much on education already it's very it's a very small amount of money that goes into uh, providing education to children and more importantly that education is accessed by uh, the most marginalized section dalits adivasis most marginalized sections in india and so Redirecting is—I uh, don't think there's any point in that. Rather, uh, it should be health education and, and it should start with health education and. And at this point of time, we understand that once you uh, take away fund from health sector, the max healthcare hospitals, which are supposed we have all have come across recently, the exorbitant fees and it cannot be paid by uh, most of the common middle class in this country, and uh, there's no. guarantee that that those prices will be will have a cap on them maximum cap on them and the existing public health care facility cannot provide and i do think that the government should start with this sector the public health care sector because covid is not going away the vaccine whatever time it takes for at least for two years the public health care system should start um, investing more should provide because it is again livelihoods and lives the, both can uh, that public health care should start with and that can generate employment as well as uh, guarantee health care for uh, many many across the country and as you said the other sector definitely the most uh, employment engage, uh, i mean absorbing sector till now in uh, rural as well as for poor section has been the construction sector and we need not to directly like employ uh, many resources into the construction sector uh, again uh, but rather what we can do we can um, provide safety and security to the workers we can provide unemployment benefits to the workers and the construction uh, sector can uh, pick up the um, Uh, production uh, right away so i do think this this would be my uh, i would like to mention here a study by acid that is annual status for education report they have uh, they have found the result that over the years there has been increase in private school enrollment okay but the test score that has not been satisfactory so this is kind of a uh, lesson for us that just by enrolling more in private school it, it it is not reflecting in the test score so i think what the government can do as as soham was pointing out there is a huge amount of population they are still dependent on the government school the go- so the government should uh, directly funding those schools better infrastructure better uh, teaching uh, teacher appointment uh, i think that would result in better human capital formation okay it's been a very good session guys thank you for joining all of you if you want to be part of the discussion you can reach out to us on facebook instagram or twitter Subscribe to our channel to listen to the most sensible voices from colleges and universities across the country.